Gold Butte is the area basically between the Arizona state line and Lake Mead to the south and to the west. It's nearly 350,000 acres. It is surrounded on all sides by land that's already protected either in the Lake Mead National Conservation Area or the Grand Canyon Parashant National Monument. It was not included in the Parashant National Monument only because of the presence of the state line. It's every bit the same geology and geography and cultural history as that. The geography in Gold Butte was mostly formed as part of the Colorado River drainage. In fact, we refer to Gold Butte as Nevada's piece of the Grand Canyon because it really is. All of the, the landscape here was affected by tributary rivers and the Colorado River itself and the, and the drainage into those areas. You wouldn't even guess from when you drive by on the freeway, and I've had people tell me that. They say, well, what's so special about it? All I see is shrubs and cactus and whatever, and it's not until you really get out here that you can see all the, the magical things that are out here, whether it's little Finland, petroglyphs at Falling Man. You might stumble upon an old mine from 100 years ago or some ranching that had been done years past. It's just a, a treasure-filled place to go exploring in. Gold Butte has over 500 miles of designated roads and ATV trails. Only 20 miles of those, however, are paved, and there's another 20 that are kept graded and usually passable by a streetcar, uh, regular car, but for anywhere else in Gold Butte, you really need a high clearance vehicle. As you come off the highway and the road gradually changes from asphalt to dirt, it's just the same feeling as losing your cell service and losing the radio, and then you're just completely surrounded by all this natural beauty. It's, it's just a, an amazing feeling of transition to simple and beautiful. It is rugged. You need to be self-sustaining. If you're out here in a single car, you need to bring extra water. Your tires need to be in good shape. Your gas tank needs to be full. Uh, because most places out here, you are out of cell phone range. When I'm out in Gold Butte, it feels like I have stepped back in time. It's quieter and, and very peaceful in a way that um, I haven't realized how much noise at home there is and then you sleep out under these beautiful stars and, and you hear the quiet whisper of the wind and to me those are things that you can't buy and while I love my technology, they are something replenishing for the soul when you get out and you spend some time in a place that has that sort of serenity to it naturally. Waking up pre-dawn and knowing that I had timed it perfectly to see the light show as the sun came up through the clouds. You could see it splash out over the red rocks and it's just, it's breathtaking and the, the stillness and the quiet. It's hard to get that in, uh, in this modern era. This was a great day to be out here in Gold Butte. The neat thing about Gold Butte is there's all kinds of things to do, whether it's coming out on foot like I do or coming out on ATVs and going exploring. People come picnic, people come and camp. What I love about it is there's basically hundreds of miles of places throughout here to run. There's no traffic, it's solitude, it's beautiful, and it's a, just a great place to get away from town. You're alone with your thoughts, and you can just enjoy the outdoors and have a great time without being interfered with by electronics or hustle and bustle or traffic. very mysterious. It's just a very special place. It's one where you come in contact with the past and the present. I have a real appreciation for the outdoors and uh, I just, this area here is, is certainly when I moved down here, 
certainly has given me a lot of happy days because I love coming out here and I love looking at it and I love bringing people out and letting them have kind of a little bit of a feeling about how important it is for this area to be preserved. So I would hope that someday that that, that comes to fruition. It's a pretty big area of just what I call raw BLM land. Much of it is ACEC, which is, gives some level of protection for our threatened desert tortoise species. It was designated as an area of critical environmental concern for the desert tortoise, parts of it were. Other parts were also designated for their cultural history resources because there are hundreds of petroglyph sites out here and encampments. After we retired in 2000, we moved here full time and I started coming out here immediately that and I, in fact, most of the petroglyphs I found initially were ones that I just ran across myself. Last year, uh, I started keeping a log of my hikes and I hiked 400 miles in Gold Butte. I don't know all of Gold Butte, but I know a lot of it. What I see out here makes me really want to preserve what's here. Deserts are extremely fragile landscapes. Even plant communities that appear to be thriving are, are mostly just getting by. It's very easy to destroy plants. Tortoise burrows, other animal burrows, do just an incredible amount of damage in a, in a short while. So it's very important to be very respectful of the landscape out here. It takes just an unbelievable amount of time for something as simple as a footprint to heal in the desert. As a Nevadan, I know that our state's relationship with tourism is changing, and it's changing fast. And a landscape such as Gold Butte is a wonderful part of that offering, a place that all Nevadans can celebrate, and, and frankly, all Americans can cherish. A wonderful, wonderful resource to the people that come traveling through this way, and to the locals that are fortunate enough to live here. When this becomes a national conservation area, it's going to be a, a, an enormous draw for the surrounding area, the real uh, economic drivers for the communities. And as businesses spring up to support all the tourists that will be coming here. This area is very vast, but it, it needs the extra care and protection and, and the effort the designation would make it more user-friendly right now. People come out here and wander around and mostly don't see anything interesting because you really have to know where to go and what to look for when you get there. What I can see is incredible interest and desire to come out and see the beauty of Gold Boot. And I think with the designation, what it really helps to do is to make sure that there are good signages when people are out enjoying the road system and making sure that they have fun out playing around. There are better opportunities for camping and kiosks and information about the cultural resources and the landscape and how it got here. There's some incredible history out here. We're making sure that we have the opportunity to share with everybody why Gold Butte is so special. A designation helps to bring resources to do those types of things and to make sure everybody has a great and safe experience out here and also that it's a good experience for the land. The motto of Friends of Gold Butte is explore, restore, and protect. We want to see people out here exploring this wonderful landscape. We work to restore areas that have been burned off or uh, damaged by casual improper usage or, or deliberate vandalism occasionally. And we want to protect it. We want to see it remain available in the current state it's in for many generations to come.